This is CBC Vancouver News. The employer started to uh, directly communicate and negotiate uh, with our members. Amid fierce wage negotiations, the union representing BC Ferry staff is accusing the corporation of unfair labour tactics and... 11 million pounds of food went through here, 100% utilised, so zero waste, true zero waste. A farm in Langley helping people overcome food insecurity says it may have to shut down because of a lack of funding. Plus... This support was so important. How one charity is providing essential winter gear to a growing number of families in need. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. I'm Janella Hamilton. Tanya is away tonight. RCMP say two people are dead after a serious single vehicle crash this morning in a rural area in southwestern Nanaimo. It happened shortly before 9 o'clock on Nanaimo River Road near Nanaimo Lakes Deadwood Campground. Mounties say Nanaimo River Road will be closed in both directions near the campground as police continue their investigation and there's no alternate route. And near Castle Gar, a collision between a pickup truck and a pedestrian has left one man dead. BC Highway Patrol says the crash happened on Highway 22 south of Castle Gar around 7 o'clock in the morning. Police say a 36-year-old man from trail died of his injuries. An investigation is underway as to why the pedestrian was walking along the highway at the time. Anyone with dash cam video or information is asked to call BC Highway Patrol Nelson. BC's fa BC Ferries rather, has found itself in some rough waters. The union representing its workers is accusing the Crown Corporation of unfair labour tactics. The BC Ferry and Marine Workers Union has filed a complaint with the Labour Relations Board asking for $2.1 million in damages. The claims come amid fierce negotiations for a wage hike. The employer started to uh, directly communicate and negotiate uh, with our members uh, and not engaging with the sole bargaining agent of more than uh, 4,700 members of our union. The union is accusing BC Ferries of a concerted campaign of misinformation, one they say has stoked anger and distrust among members. In the complaint, BC Ferries is also accused of bargaining behind the union's back. The corporation says it follows its collective agreement and will file a response. A member of the opposition says she is stunned to learn about a movie production taking place took, that took place at Peace Arch Hospital over the last two days. In a social media video, Eleanor Sturko, who is the Shadow Minister for Mental Health, Addiction, Recovery and Education, says given the ongoing crisis in the BC healthcare, filming in a hospital isn't acceptable. And we know that there are still patients languishing in hallways. They've decided to lease this out to make movies instead. Hospitals are meant for health care. And that's exactly what should be happening here instead of making another movie. Fraser Health maintains hospital operations were not impacted and the filming took place in a non-active unit that was being prepared for renovations. Adding revenues from the filming will go towards supporting patient care at the hospital. A farm in Langley that, that diverts millions of pounds of food from the landfill says it may have to shut down because of a lack of funding. As Karis Hogg reports, some local food banks and farmers say Refeed Canada is an integral part of the food system, helping bridge the gap amid rising food insecurity. On a sunny Saturday in Langley, people are flocking to this farm to pick up their bounty boxes, a package filled with 25 pounds of produce at a low cost. Refeed Canada says the perfectly edible food would otherwise end up in a compost facility. Last year, the company rescued and sorted through millions of pounds of food that big grocery stores, distributors and wholesalers didn't want. Stuart Lilly says diverting food from the landfill also cuts down on carbon emissions. 11 million pounds of food went through here, 100% utilized. So zero waste, true zero waste. Lilly says Refeed Farm is a first of its kind, a circular food system that ensures food is rescued and used to its highest value, which is feeding people. Lilly claims the company is the only one locally rescuing food at this scale. But after an investor backed out, 
He says refeed is facing shutdown if it doesn't get funding soon. This is it. It's not going to come back. If we're gone, this is not going to come back for five, six years because of all the different pieces that we knew how to put together to be able to get it to this stage. Stats Can says nearly one in five Canadians are struggling with food insecurity. Refeed says it has contributed one million pounds of fresh food to local food banks last year. David Long with the Greater Vancouver Food Bank says the service the company provides is vital for helping them meet the growing demand. What Stuart has in this uh, sort of circular system that he's created, it should be recreated all over the province. Maple Ridge farmer Johnny Wu agrees. He feeds his farm animals with food rescued by Refeed. Uh, actually help us a lot. They, they give us really uh, uh, good, uh, cheap uh, food to support our animal. Lily says it's been a challenging time keeping the company afloat, with inflation impacting operating costs and a rise in rent. I've been carrying the, you know, the, the heavy lifting of this financially for four years now. Um, we need the partners that want to actually fix the broken system because we have the solutions. Lily says he is starting a nonprofit arm of the farm in order to make use of government grants. He's also hoping to get support from the food industry and local businesses. People who, like him, want to find solutions to rising food insecurity and reduce food waste. Karis Hogg, CBC News, Langley. Ski hills across the province continue to be challenged by the mild weather this December, and that impact is being felt in BC's East Kootenai region. Corey Bullock has more on how one alpine resort has been working around the clock to get the hill open for the holiday season. December has proven to be warmer than usual for BC's southeast, making it challenging for ski hills to get the right conditions. But it hasn't stopped Kimberly Alpine Resort from opening on schedule. So we had some challenges with the, um, the rain a couple of weeks back, but it actually set up the mountain really well in that it's covered a lot of like the base area. And then we've got a good chunk of, of snow, fluffy, fun stuff to play on today. So Environment Canada says this year's El Nino is bringing slightly warmer weather for the region but precipitation levels are looking fairly seasonal for the coming months. In the meantime, crews in Kimberley are working around the clock to make snow. Mother Nature sometimes doesn't, you know, give you all, all that you want. You don't get roses all the time, but uh, we survived it. And, you know, the snowmaking crew's done a great job here and the mountain operations crew getting the hill open. Despite the challenging weather, hundreds of residents came out to opening day on Friday. Yeah, I, I thought there was going to be no snow. I thought we were going to have to wait like an extra two weeks or something for it to open. I mean, it's super fun. You just have to find the right places to go. How's the snow up there today? It's not so bad. Better than expected. Hasn't snowed much in town, but it's pretty good up top. Canada's forecaster says that the El Nino is starting to taper off, meaning there's a chance to build up a good base of snow in the mountains. But that snowpack will be something to watch later in the season. I'd say about two-thirds of the mountain's open and uh, the snow that's there is good. It's a good base and now uh, when Mother Nature helps out, we get a nice little dump of snow. We'll be in really good shape for Christmas, hopefully. Environment Canada says the East Kootenai will continue to see slightly warmer than average temperatures into next week and there's a good chance the region will see more of the white stuff before the holidays. Corey Bullock, CBC News, Kimberley. All right, it is time now to look at those uh, mild weather forecasts for much of the province. Let's start with a look at our current temperatures. We're sitting about 7 degrees here in Vancouver. Hope is seeing about 6 degrees, 2 degrees in Kamloops, and a minus 8 in Prince George. Moving along to tomorrow's forecast, Comox is going to see a mix of sun and clouds with lots of rain at 6 degrees is your high for tomorrow. Whistler, it's sitting nice and sunny with a high of 4 degrees. A little warmer in Abbotsford with a high of 8 tomorrow. And uh, in Tofino, a high of 10. So that's a little bit warmer in those areas. And moving to our five-day forecast here in Metro Vancouver, tomorrow we're going to see a mix of sun and clouds with a high of eight that's going to turn into more cloud coverage for monday with a high of nine and that precipitation is going to rear its head out on tuesday wednesday and thursday with a high of eight finishing us off on thursday 
Well, with winter upon us, some newcomers to Canada can find the weather, the change in weather, challenging. As Sorab Sandu reports, one charity that provides essential items to families in need says with the rising cost of living, demand is skyrocketing and more families are struggling to keep their kids warm and dry as temperatures drop. Mira, se para esta pregunta para mí como Luca. ¿Ya viste el hombre del camión? Salvador and Sira brought his family to Baby Go Round a year ago when his young kids were in need of winter essentials. We receive lots of items for the winter, like uh, uh, blankets, a uh, crib, a uh, crib with the, with the uh, coach sheets. The family says the items they received has helped keep their kids safe during the winter, items they would not have been able to afford otherwise. When we arrived, uh, the, our circumstances were completely different and this support was so important. And they are not alone. Baby Go Round says this year it is seeing a spike in demand from families. We've seen about a 60% increase in clients this year over last year. And that has translated to about 800 families so far this year. To help meet that need, the charity is putting together winter weather protection kits that will be distributed to families with babies who are struggling to make ends meet amid rising inflation. Sometimes it's, you know, a toque and gloves and socks and boots and a winter suit and a blanket. They're in the rain, they're in the snow, they're in the cold with their babies and they're walking to the grocery store, maybe taking transit if they can afford to take transit. So for them, the winter weather creates additional challenges. Baby Go Round works with more than 100 referral agencies in the greater Vancouver area connecting with families who are most in need. We are seeing a, a higher population who are new to Canada, so they don't have the social circles here to be able to call on friends for gently used items. This family says it's grateful for the kindness and support they have received and are now planning to do the same by donating items back to the store. Saurabh Sandhu, CBC News, Vancouver. From free haircuts to winter clothing, an annual pop-up clothing market returned to Oppenheimer Park today. Organizers say the Vancouver Street Store gives hundreds of downtown Eastside residents a dignified shopping experience where they can pick and choose their own items. I want to say like, they do scratch, so 30, 32. Hi, my name is Chris Landicho. I'm the Community Partnerships Lead, and I'm also the co-project lead for today's street store, which is happening here today at Oppenheimer Park. The street store is an annual pop-up, and so this year is the 10th year. And what it is is the opportunity for residents of the community to be able to choose up to 10 gently used items. And the real goal here is a dignified shopping experience. You know, the community has gone through a lot of adversities over the past three years, from, you know, the opioid crisis to the street sweeps and the disencampments. So we just want to really have a day where we can have people take what they need, enjoy a hot meal, and just feel celebrated. Keep stacking. Okay, so you want burger? The hat is, like, it's how people recognize me. We're going to serve about 700 today. It goes quick, it's fast, it's, you know, the need is, the need is there. I'm proud. I'm proud. I'm proud of... Myself, the team, my fellow uh, board members, and just anyone that's ever been, been involved on the sidelines or on the front lines. So what was really great this year for our 10th year is we were able to collaborate with Vancouver Community College with their hairdresser and barber school. Great. Beautiful day in BC. Going for a walk in the park. Next year I know I'm getting a haircut. Merry Christmas. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great day. I've done this. I've done this a few times and I love it every year. It's just a really, we, can, we can't do everything we need to for the community that needs help, but we can do what we can and this is something that we can do. So I love coming down here to do this. Oh, I love it. It's not raining, it's, it's nice. This is my old, I've been down in the East End now for since 1972. So I really feel that people need stuff like this. Every, you know, I really do. I feel that. Just to be acknowledged is, is I, as a recovering addict, alcoholic, I, I used to be homeless. I feel, you know, 
just to have someone acknowledge you. We live in the, one of the richest cities in the world, and just a few blocks away, you have people dying every day. People are not getting their essentials met. People are not able to get resources. This is Gabriel. This is my son. His first year at the street store. The reason, the reason we sponsor is. Uh, I've been in the in the situation. It brings a lot of emotions for me, as far as uh, what I've been through myself in this city, and having a family. And I just don't wanna, I don't wanna see families go through it, all the suffering and not being able to afford clothing, you know, shelter, food. The cost of living is going up so drastically that it's 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 really heartbreaking. And there must, there must, they must, something must be done. A remarkable story of giving back out of Nanaimo now, where a hard-working senior is donating $10,000 in food gift cards to help families who are struggling. And it's all thanks to his thrift store business that has become a centerpiece of the community. They're very proud of who they are and they work hard, but they can't keep up with their bills. He's donated more than $400,000 in the past five years to help Nanaimo sports teams and music programs. But this year, with soaring interest rates, rents and food prices, he's decided to focus his giving on people's basic needs. Coming up, for the first time in history, the Vatican has convicted and sentenced one of its cardinals. That story is next. Reports in Israel say negotiations are underway to recover hostages held by Hamas in Gaza. They say Israel's spy chief has met with the Prime Minister of Qatar, the country that's assumed a mediator role. Speaking today, the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu referred to negotiations but did not disclose their subject. <laughs> Al-Hamas. He also rejected a ceasefire and said Gaza would ultimately be demilitarized and under Israeli security control. It all followed the mistaken shooting of three hostages by Israeli forces and an initial inquiries report that the trio were carrying a white flag. In the war today, southern Gaza's Nasser Hospital treated dozens of wounded and received at least 20 dead. Among strikes in the north, Palestinian officials say a YMCA sheltering displaced people was hit. A Vatican tribunal has convicted Cardinal Angelo, Angelo Becciu of embezzlement and handed down a jail sentence of five and a half years. He is the first cardinal to be convicted and sentenced by the Vatican. The case revolved mainly around a property deal that ended in huge losses for the church. But Chu and nine others were accused of embezzlement, abuse of office, and witness tampering. His lawyer is promising an appeal. Russian media says Vladimir Putin will seek a new presidential term in March's election, but not on the ticket of the party he currently leads. Putin indicated in front of generals last Friday he, he would run in March. Today's reports say he'll do it as an independent and that 700 backers endor endorsed the plan today. They also say Putin still has the full support of his United Russia party. Putin has held power for almost 24 years. Ukrainian authorities say 11 regions were targeted last night by Russian drone attacks. The capital, Kiev, was among the targets. Across the country, officials say 31 drones were launched. They say all but one were shot down by fighter jets and anti-aircraft anti missiles. Officials say a hospital unit was damaged in Kherson, where one doctor was wounded. Officials say it is the sixth such drone strike since the beginning of the month. Here we have a live shot of Queen Elizabeth Theatre. After the break, how squirrels are stealing Christmas. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Amy Bell, and here's what's in your CBC Vancouver inbox.
For 37 years, British Columbians have been donating to food banks at CBC British Columbia's Food Bank Day, raising more than $18 million for food banks in BC. December 1st kicked off the annual charity drive and continues to the end of the month. We thank you for generously donating and supporting local communities in our province. Make the season kind and donate until December 31st at cbc.ca slash foodbankday. Many of us are getting into the festive spirit and turns out some of our furry neighbours are in on the act as well. Some East Vancouver residents say they are losing bulbs on their outdoor string lights to bush-tailed thieves. Squirrels are gnawing, the, are the gnawing culprits on the cables, running away with the bulbs. Take a look. <laughs> home one day and um, looked in our cameras and I said to my husband, I think our light bulb's missing. He was like, no, it's not. And I said, yeah, I remember one. So we looked through the feed and noticed um, the squirrel popping in and just chewing off the light bulb. We didn't believe until we saw it because um, last year when it happened, we thought someone came in and cut them, but we don't know for what reason. And then we opened the door and we looked down and we're like, holy, the whole line was missing um, light bulbs. <laughs> Then another friend said, oh, check your Facebook feed. Looks like it's happening around our neighborhood. And sure enough, when I logged in, I'm like, holy smokes, we're not the only ones. Earlier in the year, we noticed a couple of them missing. And a friend that lives down the road had suggested that maybe it was the squirrels. And then it felt like within the week, they were all gone, like 100 feet of string lights. And so we bought all new lights and put them up. Um, I think my husband was gonna kill me. I bought like a decoy owl. It was my mission to have these lights for the summer. We were like spraying like natural rodent deterrents, like just trying anything to get them to not take our lights. And then it was fine for a couple of weeks and then we went away for four days and we came back and they were pretty much all gone. Well, we're hanging a lot of lights and things outside of structures, so there's just more visibility for these things to chew. Usually when it happens, it's a lot more discreet. It's inside an attic or a wiring that might be there. I mean, you will hear of car ignition wires and things of that nature getting chewed as well. And, you know, for the sake of recycling, we'll, we'll cover those things in soy-based products as well, which doesn't help, you know? And so basically they'll find those of a good purchase and then they'll chew those. Squirrels will take and steal and nest with things as well. So, you know, from light bulbs to wedding rings, I've found all sorts of uh, interesting trinkets that uh, squirrels have decided to uh, thief. I mean, it's so funny. I was, I mean, it's, it's annoying, but I think even rehanging them, there was a bit of a joke to it because I knew they weren't going to last. Tough times, I guess, if they're stealing light bulbs. <laughs> You know, they should have learned their lesson from last year because you can't eat them and they're big compared to nuts. That is your late news for this Saturday. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great night.